It is a cold and cloudy day, and I can't think of a better time than now to talk about solar panels. These two solar panels did come with the camper that I purchased for less than $600, and they appear like they're in pretty good working shape, so I think that's a pretty good deal. The only problem is the wiring was pretty shoddy. Here's actually a mess of wires that I pulled off from where, where they connect to the battery. And since I have to redo all that wiring anyways, I thought it would be a good opportunity to get these solar panels on a, a stand that I can move away from the camper. So throughout the day I could get the most sunlight on them and then get the most energy. Hopefully we'll get that all set up and get these batteries charging. In the morning I wake up coffee You were sleeping in softly And I made my mess all around I turn my TV down I lay my bed on the earth Holy thou I lay my mess all around Turn my TV down. I made my bed in a room. Hold me now. In April came, I find myself in pieces. Sweet, sweet friend. In the morning, I wake up, coffee, and you were sleeping in. Softly, you never mind the sun peeking. Open out the door, open. You never mind that I was broken. Sweet, sweet friend. So I connected new um, top post terminals. Connections for the top post. And then from there, I have the wiring that will eventually go to the solar panel. Now there is an inline fuse there. So that could should help protect the system in case there was a backfire somehow. Um, and the best part is, is that I'll have this quick connect disconnect. So if I do store the solar panels in a different place... I'll be able to take them out, put them where I want them to get the most sunlight, and then connect it and disconnect it real easy. It's also nice because you can't screw it up, so you're never going to end up having the positive charge go to the negative. Of course, there are plenty of different options for batteries. I think the system that I would like most is to have two 6-volt batteries and then to run them in series. I think that would give you the best power. I saw that two golf cart batteries is really ideal. But I don't have that stuff lying around. And everyone has 12 volt batteries lying around. So I decided to just go with the simple 12 volt car. Well, right now it's a car battery. It might end up being a deep deep cycle marine battery at some point because I have a couple of those too but for right now just a regular 12 volt car battery I connected the positive terminal first and now I got the negative connected or the ground I also thought about storing this battery inside the camper on a, one of the hatches that's on the side. But after looking into that a little bit further, I realized that was maybe not the best idea because of the gas that a battery gives off when it's charging. Or I, I'm sure that that's pretty minimal, but why risk it? So went right back to the front, mounting it right Probably where the battery used to be. I'll get a battery case for this later and, and of course, secure it down a little bit better. But for right now, that's, that's about it. 
just on the 12 volt system, the furnace is working perfectly. It seems like it's blowing hot air real nice. The lights in here are all working as they should. And my charging station in the back is working correctly. The only problem I'm having is with the water pump. The water pump, which is located in this bench here, or underneath this bench here, is not working. There is a switch for the water pump on the side of the kitchen cabinet here. And that's in the on position. There's the fuses at, that I checked and the fuse looks good. So I'm, just, I'm wondering if there's a wire along the way that might be cut into or maybe a mouse nibbled into that. So I'm going to try to bypass all the wiring and hook it up directly to the battery. I'm not going to go through all the work of taking the battery off of the camper and then bringing it in here. I'm just going to go from the outside from the access panel, run a wire in, make a quick connection and see if it works then. I am a fan of this bench. This, this is pretty cool as far as the slide out bench is going to camper. This one works really nice. It's easier than most futons that you use. And the water, the holding tank for the water is in here. And the pump like I was mentioning. It is a little bit nasty in there. And I am going to use, um, I'll clean it up and then I'll use some great stuff to seal off any areas where maybe critters are coming in. But there's the water pump. And I'll try to see if I can get that connected from the outside. And then I'll, I'll put the wire in through here. Then the water pump's located right there. The only problem is, is that this latch, or well, key to entry, is totally corroded, so I gotta use the pliers to open it up right now. That works out. So I'll run that into the water pump. Unfortunately, I can't hear it. Hey, I might not hear it because the furnace is running. Well, hey, there we go. You might not be able to hear it, but the pump did work there, which is great news. I don't have to buy a new water pump, which can be kind of pricey. But I guess I suppose, I suppose I have to find out where the misconnection is along the line and get that taken care of. That might be a little bit harder job. Guess I'll check one of the first suspect areas, the, the switch for the water pump. See if there's an issue there. Huh, there's definitely an issue there. Totally... Totally missing the wire. So I guess I'll have to do a little fishing. This is good. Um, hmm. So I think the easiest way 
to get to that wire is to remove this access panel in front of the furnace. Ah, yep. I think I see it back there. There we go. So I should just have to connect that to the switch. Alright, there you go. The pump sounds like it's working. That was an easy fix. Since I have the panel off, I thought I'd work on this furnace a little bit more. Now I did work on it before and I removed the duct work and I got rid of the dead mice in there. And the furnace is running perfectly fine, but it still has the smell of mouse whenever I run it. So I'm hoping I can blow out some of that stuff with just the air compressor here. Now that I know everything's working inside the camper on, on the 12 volt system, I can get back to working on connecting the solar panel. So to make the connection from the battery to the solar panel, I have an old extension cord. And this link should work out well, because I'll be able to get up on the roof if I need to catch sun there, or get a distance away from the camper if to find where the sun is. I'm just going to make a simple connection, twisting the wires around and then wrapping it with electrical tape to get to my quick connect. It's kind of nice working in a camper, you don't have any electrical code that you have to follow. There it is, I have all the connections made. There's a disconnect from the solar panel to the charge controller. The charge controller has the input coming from the solar panel and then the output going to my extension cord. And then all the way at the end is the quick connect. I also have another quick connect with a voltage reader on it. So I can just easily put that in there and see how many volts I'm collecting from the sun right now. It says 10.4. I can also take that same connection and connect it to the battery to see what the charge is there. 13.1. And of course, I can take the two ends Connect them, and I should be getting some charge to the battery from the solar panels right now. So, like I've said, I want to take this solar panel off from the front here and get it to where I can move it around easier to get it into the sunlight. So I'll unscrew it from here, and then I have an idea to have a board run across it. I can put some hooks on there so I can use that to wrap up the extension cord and I'll be able to mount the charge control right onto that.
that's about it for the project. I took the flap or the window protector off the front here. And I, I like the looks of the camper much better without it. I may end up putting something there to protect the windows as I go down the highway. But my guess is that's not really necessary either. Um, solar panel works out well on this very, very basic frame that I built. And it fits nice in the side storage. I did take the other solar panel off too. And I, I have that available if this solar panel isn't enough for what I need it for. But we're not going to be really probably using too much power inside there. It's, it has LED lights. And I can't, I, I don't really see us taking like week-long camping trips with this just yet, but you never know.